Coding is one of the most amazing things you can do in the world. You can build apps, you can build games, and you can start companies. It's a skill you have to learn if you want to be part of creating the internet. <laughs> oh, wow. If this is your first time watching, I've been coding for six years and I've worked at a few really big tech companies. And if you want to be a successful programmer, we're going to have to talk about how to build a better mindset, the coding choices that make sense today, and how to be even more efficient when you are coding. Those aren't just random punches either. They're targeted. So let me teach you everything you need to know when you're learning how to code. So what surprises a lot of people between good developers and great developers is just their mindset around programming. All the information is out there on the internet. The only difference is how they're approaching problem solving. So what I've noticed is that programmers usually have two types of mindsets. They either get really frustrated or really curious if they see a bug. Frustrated programmers really just want to flip the computer and just not look at the bug without solving it. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Curious programmers get really curious about what is going on and how they can fix their problem. If you haven't noticed already, great programmers have really strong growth mindsets. They're curious about how things work and how to make things better. You know you have a growth mindset if you're really curious about what's causing the bugs how the syntax really works for your language, and what you could be doing to learn more. It's going to take a lot of time to learn all these things, but that's what makes you a better programmer. Now, this doesn't mean to learn everything all at once. You don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. What you need to remember is that coding is meant to build things. It's meant to build apps and websites, not just for the sake of learning how to code. So don't dig into every niche of every programming language. If you know a JavaScript framework, you know enough to make a web page. You don't need to learn another JavaScript framework. Whoa. If you like this video so far, definitely subscribe. It helps the channel grow a lot. I want to remind you that it's okay if you don't know everything. That's what documentation is for, and you can follow the examples that make sense to save you from learning things that you don't have to. This is all part of problem solving your own issues. Being a programmer means being a problem solver. It can get really frustrating and really hard, but don't give up. If you feel stuck when coding, it's not because you're dumb. It's because you're being challenged, and learning is supposed to be challenging. And the best way to code is by actually writing down code, not by reading books or watching videos, but by getting out your IDE and programming. Just do it! Now there's a lot of technology out there, but here's what you should focus on. So the best way to learn how to code is by learning one language really, really well. Every language has for loops, while loops, recursion, and if statements. You just have to start with one to build your logical reasoning and learn all the other languages later. And if you need one to start, I recommend starting with Python or JavaScript. Python because it's easier to read and learn. If you feel like Python is too easy, just remember that Python is part of every university curriculum. For JavaScript, that's because you can build websites. I know a lot of people need to see what they're building and get those dopamine hits to keep them motivated. Now don't get stressed into picking the right language. You're not locked into these languages for life. You can always learn the other one later. Now let's talk about the advanced content. Every programmer needs to know object-oriented programming. It's not something you're going to get by in the industry without knowing. And I'm going to tell you right now to learn Java or C++. You're not going to go wrong with either option. They have huge communities. And what that means is that if you ever run into a bug, I can promise you that someone has actually asked that question before. You'll find it on Stack Overflow or ChatGPT or GitHub issues. You're going to find the answer to your problem. I got it. I got it. Whoa. If you really care about the details, C++ will teach you a little bit more about parallel computing if you want to be that advanced. After going all of this, the next thing you'll want to learn is about databases. And that's because all of software engineering is literally just getting some object from a database and sending it back to a client. To do that, you'll either need to learn SQL or NoSQL. But just learn SQL to learn how to get the data easier. What? Now you can put all of these technologies together to build something, and that means building an API on a server to interact with your database. You might not realize, but at this point, you're a software engineer because all they're doing is putting all of these components together to build something really awesome. Now we're talking a lot about things that you're building, but if you want to take it a step further, it's to use something that someone else has already built. That means using a third-party API. Now back in my day, using Google Maps was the really trendy thing to do. But I recommend a lot of people start using ChatGPT or other Gen AI APIs if they really want to be caught up with the technology nowadays. That was my huge overview on learning how to code. And I'm teaching you all of this because it's going to help you find a job. To start, you'll have to do lead code questions to pass your interviews. And I recommend you only do lead code questions with only one programming language. Definitely start with cracking the coding interview. Now, the problems in this book are definitely way too easy for the bar of coding interviews nowadays, but it's a great place to start off with because it gives you all the structure you need to start learning how to practice for coding interviews. Then you'll move on to the blind 75. 
and everything in here is a little bit harder, but they'll teach you the fundamentals you'll need to learn for every data structures and algorithms question. To take it a step further, go through the book Elements of Programming Interviews. Now the questions in this book is going to be a lot harder than the Blind 75, but these books are literally at the bar of what most tech companies are asking nowadays. But don't start here if you're still learning the basics. Be strong. Now the only thing that's going to prepare you more than that is a website called CSES and a lot of the questions here are related to competitive programming. I didn't go through all of them, but I did do enough questions all the way down to the graph section. Once you do the questions here, I promise you'll almost never fail another coding interview again. Those questions were so hard I still have PTSD going through them. But now that you're confident with coding, let's talk about how you can be a little bit more efficient. Efficiency is important because everyone is learning how to code, but a lot of people are learning how to code faster than others. It's not because they're smarter, it's because they have better workflows. To start, you have to learn how to use your browser shortcuts. 50% of your time is spent coding, the other 50% is spent googling something. So you have to make sure you're efficient with using your browser. Now you don't have to learn every shortcut, just the ones that you're using really often. The ones that I use are opening and closing a tab, switching between tabs, and jumping to the search bar. The next thing every developer needs to do is learn how to use the terminal. This thing is a really super powerful thing that you can use, but you have to learn how to use it well. Gigabyte of RAM should do the trick. Not everything is going to have an interface. In fact, it's faster because it doesn't because you don't have to use your mouse. The less you use your mouse, the faster you're going to code, I can guarantee you. Now when you're coding, you definitely want to use an IDE. I'm personally using VS Code because of all the shortcuts it has. Definitely take the time to learn them, because what you'll realize is that you spend more time moving code around versus actually coding it, which surprised me too. And as you're coding, you're going to need to learn a version control system. And I've never worked at a company where they didn't use some type of Git, GitHub, or any other type of some repository to save their code. Just get started now so you can learn how to push your code and fix any merge conflicts that someone else is causing. <laughs> Which also means that whenever you're coding, you have to learn how to be an effective debugger. Programming is 5% coding, 95% debugging. So it pays off to learn your debugging tools. One of the best ways to do that is by going through documentation. There's information there that you can't find anywhere else. It does take some time to go through, but it does answer more questions than what you can find in a Stack Overflow link. Now, the last thing I wish I did when I was learning how to code was reading more books. Most of the time, what made code hard to debug was that it wasn't organized really well. I mean, if we spend so much time debugging, it's worthwhile to read a book or two on it. Some of the books I'm going to recommend is Clean Code, Pragmatic Programmer, Refactoring Legacy Code, in a philosophy of software design. Now don't make the same mistake I did of reading these books cover to cover. They're not intended to be read that way. They're presenting you an idea and as long as you understand that idea, you can move on. It's okay if you don't even understand the code examples, as long as you can walk away with the idea. You will be an amazing programmer. I hope the advice in this video was helpful and I'll catch you in the next one.